Welcome everyone. Happy Thursday morning. Welcome to the Oak and Lamb YouTube channel. My name is Becca Oaks. I don't know if my microphone is on. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb and Miss Rachel Langston, the voice you hear, is also an owner and craft educator. I'm sitting down because I'm particularly lazy today, so bear with me. Um, well, it's a, it's a rainy, dreary day here in East Tennessee day. anyways. And, and you know. I'm exhausted, and we'll talk about that after our crafting at the end when we have our chat time. Um, but welcome. We're excited that you're here. I'm upset with you, Rachel. I now want the YHTV Rot Sublimation sticker paper, and I can't get it. Cat, I found it on eBay. You should be upset, Cat. I, I literally... It's the best. It's the best thing. Yeah. It is the best craft product I have reviewed. I'm excited honestly about in it. months. Yeah, I'm I so found, impressed with. Found a with 20 it. pack on eBay cap for 9.99, and so I've ordered it. I'll let you know. Obviously, eBay is not our preferred choice yeah. for purchasing things like that, but I wanted it so bad. I thought I would try it. Um. Anyway, today we're going to talk about things that you might be doing wrong with print and cut and. We, I feel like we do this a lot, but I keep forgetting that we're onboarding new members who are brand new members or that we have viewers here at Oak and Lamb who are brand new members and they don't know about print and cut or calibrating their machine because they've just opened their Cricut. So we're going to give them all the great information about that. We're going to make a fun little, just a little postcard type card today. But I want to do what I'm going to do is going to design space. We're going to talk about some stuff here. Uh, print this off without changing our settings, without calibrating so that you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to calibrate and change our settings so that you can see the difference that it makes. So we're going to calibrate today. We're going to do a little bit in design space. I'm going to show you a cut file that's going to be releasing next week. Some of you all, if you are flock members already, have seen it. It is really cute. It is actually a quilt that mom is making um, for Fallon. It's so cute. I made a little pattern. If you're interested in the pattern, I can upload the pattern as well. Um, anyway, I did my first sublimation tumbler last night, and I love it. I'm so excited. It worked. Kathy, is it not amazing when our crafts turn out wonderfully? I'm so happy for you that it went well. Um, let's see what else. Congratulations on your first sublimation tumbler. Yes, Miss Linda. Sublimation projects especially are so sad. You get like the instant gratification. They They're such amazing products. Every time you pull that paper off. I know. I love making it's projects. Like, oh, with, oh, it's, it's so best. good. Yes. Even if it's bad. You know, it's even true. If it, even if you're like, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, look at this color transfer. Yeah, even though it's, you know. Not really what I wanted. I did buy that HTV sub sticker paper myself from eBay. I got it Tuesday and I've already used it and I love it. Jenny, amazing. That's great to hear. I don't know. Let me look. I don't know when mine's shipping. It'll probably be when I'm out of town next week. Speaking of next week, we are all going to be out of town. Originally, we said we were going to do our Flock Talk live for this Saturday. It will not go out this Saturday. We'll be filming it on Saturday at the campground and it will be pre-recorded because Anna had a really fun idea for it. Yes. It's so it'll great. go out a little bit late. It'll go out sometime next week for you mm -hmm. all. But we're also going to be crafting live. We thought we would do pre-recorded content for the whole week mm -hmm. and then just kind of premiere it with you all like we've done in the past when we were out of town. But we're going to craft live from Rachel's camper. So that's going to be fun. Now, I did not get a camper. I wish Rachel's I, I, rented camper. I wish we got a camper. We rented one for yes. the week, which is going to be Rachel's fun. Rachel's rented camper. But it's going to be great. You guys are going to be seeing us in a different element. It's going to be fun. I'm yeah. excited. I'm looking up estimated deliveries Friday, July 21st. Yeah, which I'm leaving on Saturday. So fun. Let me see. Maybe it'll come early. I don't want it. Set. I can get it's coming Monday. I can get my parents to go put it in. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, over in Design Space, this is the file that we are going to be using, and this will be, there will be a PNG version and there will be an SVG version in the files that you'll download. 
This is an SVG version, and the reason that I wanted to share this version with you is because it has all of these fun layers. So you can see here, if you didn't like these colors, you can go in and change them. Now, that is a lot of work. There are 24 colors here, and I got to be honest, I was kind of a crazy person about placement and making sure that there's only like one color used per row. Like, I, it's insane. Anyway, um, but you can change those. So if I want the problem, which is not really a problem, if you know, is that if I wanted to print and cut this, all I'd have to do is flatten, right? And it changes it from SVG to print and cut. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the class. What will happen if I just do this? What is the problem with just doing this? Let me know. I'm going to wait and see. I know there's a delay, so it won't take just a few minutes. I couldn't find the sublimation sticker paper. I found it, but the link's too long to post in the chat. Yeah. All you have to uh, search, I literally just typed in sublimation sticker paper, and underneath the A sub ones, it's the very first one. HTV around sublimation sticker paper, 20-piece, glossy, white, waterproof. It's on there. Yeah, so the problem is it's, it's not like a quick, easy link from Amazon or something like that. Because no. you're not you can't find it there no. right now. Yeah. Um, if I don't get a response soon, then I'm going to move on, which is fine. E the boys need to craft. Yes, they do. Wayne and Mark will. They don't care at all. It will cut all through each square. Darlene, ding, ding, ding. You are correct. It's going to cut out each individual shape here because these were individual shapes. So what this looks like one solid piece, right? It's not. This is what it actually is. Hold on. Let me just show you. Design space sees it as this. Even when it's flattened, design space sees it as this. So it's going to cut each individual shape. So we don't want that. So even if you have a solid shape like this, you're going to have to flatten it to a color or to a basic shape. So wait, this is this one's particularly easy. Size is whatever we want. What's a what's a postcard size? Is it four by four by six? Okay. So let's make this four four inches. And it'll make it four by five point three three. So that's fine. We're just gonna leave that there because if I don't want to distort the shape of the rainbow by making it four by six. So all I need to do now is grab a basic shape just like this and make it the exact same width and height. So four inches by 5.33 does not matter what color you do. Honestly, it doesn't. And then you're going to send this to the back. So send it to the back. Now we're going to line this up, center it, align and center both both horizontally and vertically so that it's right on top. So now what design space will see when we flatten it is just this right here, which is nice. Okay. So one other thing that I want to do is just put some words on here and I took this, you are great. I'll redo it for those who might be new. Um, we're just going to grab our text box right here and type in you, come on, you, enter R, enter great. Now, if this font were not selected, you could come up here, choose your font. This is called Retro, it's on my system. I do have it downloaded, I've purchased it and have a commercial use license for it. Um, and then there's a couple of options for formatting this. If you just want to keep it like this, but want to decrease your line spacing, then you can come up to the top and easily decrease, decrease that line spacing by pressing that down arrow, or you can put specific numbers in here, however you want to do that. I Since I am going to be changing the size of this, but not necessarily this, I am not going to do it that way. First, what I'm going to do is decrease my letter spacing because I do want these closer together. And April asked a great question. She said, do you always place a square behind when you want to flatten for SVG? That's a great question. Yes, you need to. 
unless it is a different shape. And we'll get to that in just a second. I'll, I, I'm very happy to go over that in a moment. Um, so for whatever reason, fonts like this, and I know what the reason is, Design Space sees this Y as a square like this. So space-wise, it's, it's pretty legit, but there's so much space right here that weirds me out. So what I want to do is press ungroup and then just move my Y over a little bit so that it looks better. Now I'm gonna group these lines together. So I'll select like that, Command G, if you're using a Mac computer, will group that together, or you can press group right here. Either way, Command G. And now what I want to do is just size this up so that it's the same width here. Size this one up so it's the same width. And then I'm going to, let me pull this up here. Align these center horizontally. This might need to be a little bit bigger. There we go. Center that again. And then I can group that together, change the color if I want to, to white or whatever color you want. I think white looks really good because it pops really nicely. And then I'm just gonna place it on the front of this. So we'll bring this to front. And because you already have that rectangle behind your image, you're not gonna, you'll just flatten this to it. So that rectangle is already there. You can make this a little bit smaller if you want to so that you can see more of the pattern. I think that looks really cute. And then you can also center this. Now, one thing that you have to think about just design-wise, if you center this horizontally and vertically, I feel like even though it's centered, it looks like there's too much space right here at the bottom. This is just the way that my eye is drawn. So for me personally, I think it looks better to pull it down a little bit and have a little bit more space right here. Even though that's obviously more space now, I think just visually it looks better to me to do that. But that's your preference. Okay, so now what we would do is just select everything flatten again right here okay so miss april asked a question would you uh, any svg would you flatten it to um, a square so um like this one right here i think this is an svg let's add this to the canvas yes this is an svg this if you flattened it to a square is going to do this right here and cut out, send it to the back and flatten it. It's going to cut out this rectangle if that's what you want. So any SVG does have to be flattened to a, a shape, an object, anything if you don't want each individual letter cut out. Now, Sometimes, if this is a PNG, this could be a PNG. Oops, unflatten. And it would still cut out each individual layer because what this, what Design Space is seeing right now, since it has a transparent background, what Design Space sees is. Hold on. It sees it all as one color, first of all. Wait, let me go find the PNG for that so that this is easier for you to understand. Sorry. How dare you? I can't How dare believe you. I can't believe you. Where's our lake life stuff? I had more than that. There it is. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Let's do this one. What design space is seeing, even though we have all of this and it looks like a square this is a png it sees it like this so it's still going to cut out each thing individually even though this is a png now if this was a png that had a solid color behind it uh, like it was a, this was on a square and it was a png then you wouldn't have to worry about it if it came in with not a transparent background so if you have a png and it has a transparent background it's going to cut out everything individually even though it's a PNG and not an SVG. Now, is that clear? Let me know. And you're probably going to go over this too, but this was a question. If you put an offset around the 
saying, would it just cut around the offset? Correct. Yes, I was going to go over that. Thank yeah. you. Only if you flatten it. Only like, if yeah. you flatten it. Yes. But And Becca will show you what she means. So, PNG or SVG, if you don't want that um, rectangle or basic shape around it, then you're going to want to do an offset. Now, with an um, the, the cool thing is, is like I said, Design Space sees this as transparent background. And so even though it should look like, because it's a PNG, it should look like a square to it, it doesn't. It's very interesting. So you can do an offset that will just go around each individual character using a PNG or an SVG. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so for creating the offset, if I create this offset right now, what is still going to happen, see, this is overlapping, so that looks good. If I flatten this right now, let's zoom in so we can see it better. Most of this is going to be attached. So all of this is attached. Basically, the only thing that will cut out separate is this top and this top, and that's because nothing is touching. So when you're creating an offset like that, you want to make sure that your offset is large enough to touch every single thing in the design. So, like, I would make this one just a little bit bigger. You can make it a little bit smaller even. Kind of like this. Um, I can press apply. Now, the danger in doing something like this is that you've got all these teeny tiny itty bitty cuts. And what happens if you're using a printable vinyl or something like that, when you get these tiny little bitty cuts, a lot of times it will rip that or not cut it entirely. And when you go to remove it, it rips it and then it, it messes the sticker up. So what I like to do is then take that offset and it's set to print and cut, so it won't let me do it. I need to change it to cut take that offset, contour out those tiny pieces. And if I wanted to leave these larger pieces, I could do that. Um, like we could hide all the contours um, and then everything is contoured out. So it would just cut around this. Or I could go in and just select like the bigger ones could still be cut out if I like that look. It's totally up to you. It's really customizable, which is nice. Um, so we could cut obviously flatten like this, and then it would cut out the perimeter, cut out this, and it would look really nice. Are there any questions about any of that? No. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to delete that. I love, I love education like this. I love these types of lives where you all are asking questions and uh, helping me think through this and helping me understand how you're thinking through yeah. it. It's really nice. Our friend said, thank you. That makes so much sense. Good, good. Okay, so... I am not going to change any printer settings. I'm not gonna change calibration. I am going to just click make it, print this out and cut it out and let you all see what it's gonna look like. Now, I do know that this machine needs to be calibrated because Rachel made some stickers. It was a little uncalibrated. Becca told me to calibrate it and I basically said no. Okay, so send it to the printer. Actually, first let's go ahead and change our material here I thought it would let me right here I'll have to cancel it and go yeah, back I'm gonna have to go back I thought it would let you right there though okay so I'm not I'm not using a legal oh I can do it right there make it right here eight and a half by eleven is what I'm going to be using press continue and then we'll send this to the printer. Now, I am not going to put add bleed on, just so that you can see what it will do. I am just going to press print, print it out, cut it out, see what happens. This may take a minute because my printer is a little slow. We'll use the craft board setting because I am using a really heavy card stock. Kathy said that cleared up a lot of confusion I had. Thank you, Becca. Yay, I'm so happy. That makes me so excited. And then I'm hoping to, we'll, we'll do the calibration in a moment right after this. Um, so get your questions ready for calibration. I know I've answered a couple on YouTube. I don't know that they were from members, but um, if you're watching this and are not a member and have questions, we still want to answer those too, even if you're not a member. While that's printing out, let's talk about membership. What does membership include? Um, it, act, it includes access to us, first of all. Like, 
basically one-on-one. -on -one. Email us whenever you want, message us whenever you want, but it also includes access to our flock through our private Facebook group. So you can ask all your amazing questions um, anytime you want, share your crafting, which honestly is my favorite part because nobody, none of your friends, none of your family understands the, um, there's not the wow factor, right? Like you show them your, your crafts, there's no like, oh wow, that's amazing but you're going to get that in, in the plot. But you also get access to our entire library of cut files with free commercial use license, our member-only content, our member-only flock talk, our member-only courses, so that you can learn things like this um, and how to use your Cricut just from start to finish. So we are running specials on that right now. We have $35 off the annual tier membership using the code 35OFF, or if you want to join using the monthly tier, then you can use the code FUN, F-U-N, for $10 off your first month. So grab that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my mat. Let me grab my little Cricut caddy here and we'll braid this down. And we're going to cut this out. So is there anyone here who has not done print and cut before? Let me know. Print and cut is my favorite feature of Cricut. And if anybody here has not heard the news, Cricut is releasing a new machine called the Venture, Cricut Venture. And it's going to do print and cut. I'm very excited to get it and try it out. I believe if I remember correctly, it will go on sale on the 25th. Um, I'm not plugging Cricut Venture, by the way. We get no kickback. I just want to talk about it. Yeah. It is $9.99 yeah. for just the machine or $12.99 for the machine and stand kit. And I'm trying to decide, let me know, do I need the stand or... I told Rachel, I think we don't need the stand here in the studio because any education that we do on it would be on this table. Let me know your thoughts. The advantage of having the stand is that it has that cradle thingy if you're using smart material and gonna have a huge, huge cut. I'm gonna tell you, I will never use smart material. Never, never. So I'm kind of thinking I don't really need the stand. But then I'm thinking the stand might be cool. I don't know. Let me know, let me know what you're thinking. Ooh, I like this question. Quick question, I'm making paper flags for a birthday and want to add numbers to the flags. Do you suggest adhesive vinyl, HTV, or paper to put on a paper? I'm guessing it's like a banner, you know, like a little flag. All of those are great options. They are. I, I, what I would say is, what do you have scraps of? Like, do you, do you have lots of vinyl scraps that you want to use? Because honestly, all three of them would go phenomenal on paper so if you have a ton of paper just use some you know adhesive and stick it on there uh, they're all great options christina said omg becca it took me forever since my hubs is out on workman's comp but i finally have the money for the illustrator course too late to get a founding flock deal if so it's okay i'm ready to learn christina of course it's not too late email me hello at oakenlane.com i will make you a special discount code for that founding flock price i would love to do that for you Okay, let's go to the overhead. Rachel, I'm going to take this off here. Now, first glance, this doesn't look bad, right? Looks pretty good. The colors are pretty good. Uh, they're a little dark in my opinion just because I made the file and no, uh, but it's pretty. It, it's really pretty. Now, here is where we have problems. Yay. Oh, Can God. you see... How we are not calibrated well. Mm -hmm. Can you see right here? We have extra color right here. Now, if you had the add bleed option turned on, what would happen is you would have extra color all the way around here so that if your machine were not properly calibrated, like our machine is not properly calibrated, then you would not see this white around it. Now, there are some instances where it is so out of calibration, no matter if you add bleed or not, it is still going to have a white area. One thing that we like to sneak and do, if we don't have the time to calibrate, is put a white offset behind our image because a lot of times if it's just this much, you're not going to see a huge difference with that extra white offset. Um, so that's nice. But this is hideous. So we're going to calibrate our <laughs> machine. Hideous. So how do we calibrate our machine? Now, first of all, 
What machines can be calibrated? If you have a Cricut Joy, you do not need to calibrate your machine because Print and Cut is not a feature offered through Cricut Joy. Now, spoiler alert, we have a great hack. If you have a Cricut Joy and want to print and cut with it, um, check out that video. It's a really great video. But machines that need to be calibrated are the Air Explore Series machines, the Maker Series machine, and then the Venture will also need to be calibrated. Um, and it's this basically the same way for all the machines. I don't know about the Venture because I, had, I, don't, I don't have one in, in store yet. But the Air Series and the Maker are the same. So let's go over to Design Space. And Rachel, I'm not looking at comments at all, so just okay. interrupt me whenever. Absolutely, yeah. Um, to calibrate, you're just going to pull up Design Space. You're going to come to your hamburger menu, and you're going to go to calibration. Now, if you have a Maker Series machine, then it's going to ask if you want to calibrate your rotary blade, your knife blade, or your print and cut. I have to be honest. I've never had to calibrate my rotary blade or my knife blade. It is an option. I have to calibrate my print and cut options quite, well, I would say... At least once a quarter, once every six months. And I mean, we use it a lot. Yes. And so then I know we're going to get this question. How do I know that I need to calibrate my machine? If you are creating print and cut and are not happy with the cut, then you need to calibrate your machine. If you are happy with your cut, don't calibrate it. There's no need. Some people say, if I move mine, then I'm going to calibrate it. Well, why? If you're getting good cuts still, why? Yeah. Um, fresh out of the box, sometimes you need to calibrate it because it's been jostled around. However, sometimes fresh out of the box, it doesn't need to be calibrated. So only calibrate if you need to because you can mess it up if it doesn't actually need to be calibrated. It you could, can, yeah. You can yeah. look at the lines wrong uh -huh. yeah. and choose the wrong thing and then it's a whole headache. The other thing I want to point out before we get started, sometimes it takes one chance to calibrate, one time to calibrate your machine properly. Sometimes I have done it seven times. So I don't know how long we're going to be here doing this. We will see. I've gone ahead and printed out some pages beforehand because that's the part that takes the longest. But here with the Maker Series machine, you have the print and cut option. If you have an Explorer Series machine, you're not going to have the rotary blade or knife blade calibration option. So you will just go ahead and select print and cut. Now this is going to come up. It's going to tell you to print out a test cut page. Um, I already have my calibration sheets printed, so I'm going to press that. If you did not have yours printed, then select whatever printer you want and press print. So I'm going to press, I have a calibration sheet. Um, select your printer, blah, blah, blah. Already did that. Press continue. Okay. So let's take a look at the calibration sheet. Calibration sheet looks like this. Uh, just use regular copy paper. It will be perfectly fine with that. And really quick, we do have a question. It okay. doesn't pertain to this, but okay. it's, is there a video on cutting magnetic sheets? I want to make them, and I assume it requires a printable vinyl magnetic sheet combo. Yeah. So there's there's actually like member -only printable. Content. Magnets. Yeah, printable magnets. And we do have a member only on it, just like Becca said. Uh, so you can check that out if you're a member. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But Cricut, like Design Space, has a setting for that, too. For the it's, magnetic sheet. Yeah, it cuts like butter. Cool. It's yeah, amazing. It's great. Yeah. Okay. So here's the calibration sheet. Great question, by the way. Um, this right here is your registration mark all the way around. That's what your machine will read for print and cut. And then we have these boxes and these lines. You can see that they're numbered. This is important. It will come into play in a little bit. So um, just like all print and cut, we're going to place this sheet in the top left-hand corner of our mat... And I'm going to braid it down, even though this mat is new, it doesn't really need to be braided. And then I'm going to follow the prompts in Design Space. So back in Design Space, it says, um, place your sheet in the top left corner of your mat, then click, press, uh, click continue. So we're going to press continue, connecting to our machine here. You can do Bluetooth or um, USB connection, whichever one you want. And then it says that there is no tool required in clamp A. Make sure that your fine point is in clamp B and then load your mat. So that's what we're going to do. If you want to go overhead, right, so they can see it or what? You all yeah, let me know. Yeah, it's good. That's good. You're right in the middle. You're doing great. Perfect. Thank you. So it's measuring the, the mat length. It's going to look for the registration marks, do all of this stuff. In a minute, the flashing start button. Well, yeah, I'll hit that just like with print and cut. And then we'll look in just a second at the next prompt in design space. This is very user friendly. The Honestly, the most difficult 
thing is deciding which one of your cuts is the most accurate because in the perfect world, your first cuts, there will be a very clear, this cut is straight down the middle. However, a lot of times you just have to choose one that is closest for your first calibration sheet. And then your last cut, you'll say, no, it's not good. And then you'll do it again. Um, and, and that's why I said sometimes it's up to seven. I mean, it could be more than that. I don't know. I have no idea. Put your hand under there. Stupid under thing here. doesn't want to. Yeah. It's because we have so many heights right here. Yeah. I don't know that it's going to do it. Let me move this wait, first. Wait, it, it was working. Wait, wait, wait. It's good. We're good. Okay. You just want you just wanted to show off your rings. That's all you wanted to do. Okay. Oh, that one. Yeah. Back to design cells. Without design walls. <laughs> I sound like Frank from, uh, uh, what's that? what's that wedding movie with? Oh, crap. Oh, Lord. What's the movie, Rachel? It's all Father of the Broad. Oh, I love Father of yeah. the Broad. I do, too. <laughs> Every party has a pooper. <laughs> anyway. Becca. <laughs> That's how we... Uh, it's, a, it's a great movie. If you haven't watched it, you have to watch it. Without unloading your mat, examine the cut line around the small square in the middle of the calibration sheet. Does the cut line touch the printed line all the way around? And then you're going to choose yes or no. So let's look back here at the overhead camera. What I like to do, this one is super, super obvious. Uh, one thing that you can do is grab your flashlight, grab your phone, whatever, and you can, you can see the line. I, or... What I like to do is just grab a weeding tool and pull this out if I can't see it. However, this one is really bad, so it's very obvious. Um, come on out here. I forgot that I used craft board paper instead of regular, so it didn't cut all the way through. Um, but you can see I have a lot of black here and none here. So I'm going to go back to design space and press no. Let's do a basic calibration. So we'll press continue, and now it's going to do a series of cuts on the top and the bottom. What was that movie that you were talking about in the, while well, we were filming the other day? Turtle. Turtle, the turtle. turtle uh, Master of Disguise, something okay. Master of Disguise. Did you watch it? No, because I forgot the name of it. I've never watched the whole thing. In, in general, stupid movies like that really get me i have to be in a mood to watch it. yeah a hundred percent yeah a hundred percent if you're not in the mood it's just you're you're ripping your that mouth. one clip was really funny though <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see here we had a question does calibration wear out your machine no great question uh, I've only calibrated once in two years. Savannah, that's amazing. That is phenomenal. I'm oh, glad. it looks like we have a perfect cut here. Hopefully we do on the other side. Okay, so back in design space, it says, without unloading, examine the lines on the top and right side of the calibration sheet. Use the drop down to select the number or letter of the printed line where the cut is centered with the printed line. Now, again, I mentioned it just a minute ago. You may have lines that are... You, you may not have a line that's perfectly centered. So choose the one that is closest and then calibrate again. Now, I have 14 is smack down in the middle here. Let's see if I have one right here. And N is smack down in the middle. So back over in design space, my top line, I'm going to choose 14 because that's the perfect line. And then I'm going to choose N. And now I'll press continue. And it's gonna tell me back in design space, we need to print another calibration sheet to review the changes. So it wants me to unload this mat. I already have one printed, so I'll go ahead and press that I have it printed. Press continue. And then I'm gonna load my next calibration sheet back on here. Connect to my machine again and go through the whole process again. Oh, I didn't line that up very good in my corner. I thought you were supposed to be a professional. What are you doing? Yeah. It's not so great. Okay. It 
it's supposed to rain all day. You know where I park here in the studio, like you get out and there's like a puddle underneath. It's my favorite. Mm. Step in a puddle first thing and my shoes are wet the rest of the day. Okay, so it's gonna do that cut that one around the square again. And then I have to see if it is where it needs to be. Oh, can you can you sing a little louder for do, us? Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's a good old uh, Dolly Parton song. Oh, is it? I will love oh. you. That's good. I know. Maybe they should just make you the elevator music on like the you know when you're on hold on the phone and stuff. No one would ever want to get off. I know. They'd be like, excuse me. I know I need to you know like pay this credit card bill, but can you just put me back just on put the me line? back on hold? <laughs> <laughs> oh it's perfect so it cut here again it does look perfect i'm going back to design space um and then i say yes proceed to fine calibration so i'm going to press continue and it's going to do that series of cuts again so it does like a i guess a general calibration and then fine which they have i forgot because I've only calibrated once since they updated the print and cut process. That didn't used to be, they didn't used to have like fine calibration and like loose. Loose is not the term that I think they use, but uh, that's a nice upgrade. Oh, there's a tip. Tip, you may need to take a photo of the calibration on your smartphone, then zoom in to answer the questions. That's a great tip. So if you can't see it, if you don't have a magnifying glass or something like that, then take a photo of it and zoom in on it. I like that tip. Oh, Rach, we're going to have a perfect machine here. Oh, I'm so I'm happy. I'm excited. That's phenomenal. Now I can make my Bad Mom Club sticker. Okay, so again, it wants me to choose which line is perfect or which, which cut is perfectly in the middle of the line. And now I have 11 is perfect. And this is hard because L and K are both really, really close. But I think L wins. So 11 and L. So that's what I'm going to choose here. Place it in press continue and then it's going to cut all the way around and it's going to ask me if i'm happy with my cut so it cuts right here all the way around and this you can't see it so let me see let me see if it would cut enough to get it off for you all it is you can't see it's perfect. There's the same amount of black left Ooh, on the paper gorgeous. as right here. It's perfect. So back in design space, yes, the cut is close enough to the center. Now, if yours was not, then you would push no. I'd like to do another calibration and you go through the process again. So now, we have yes. filmed videos for courses before where Becca has had to do this five, six, seven yeah. times in a row to yeah. get it to cut properly. So now that we're calibrated, Let's go print this again, and I want to change a couple of settings that you might not know about. So, we're going to click Make It. We are going to connect to our machine. Oh, we also have to change our paper size. Press Continue. Send to our printer now. I am going to leave this ad bleed option on. Now, my machine is perfectly calibrated, so I really don't. Let's turn it off. Should I turn it off? Turn what off? The, the ad yeah. bleed so they can see how yeah, perfect it is. Yeah, let's see okay. if she's perfect or not. Okay, let's so we'll turn it edge. off. <clears throat> now what I want to do is use the system dialog. Never, ever, 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 ever skip this. Don't skip this. I wish it were default. Me too. It should be. And I also wish that you could change the printer settings here in Design Space without the the system dialog box printer box coming up. I feel like you should be able to do this. Okay, so now we're going to press print. We do have to minimize Design Space. Some people don't have to. I have to. And what we're going to do is press 
best quality. This is so important. You can also select rear tray if you're printing from the rear um, and your media type. So if you were using a glossy material or a matte material or whatever, um, then you would you would choose that here. I'm just, let's see here, plain paper. Let's choose plain paper. That's what we're using. And we're going to print this out. Print, 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 print. I'm gonna switch to your beautiful face while it prints out. Even though all they can see is that watch because the watch is as big as the table. It's hard to see. It's hard to see anything over that watch. Hard to see. I'm going to get right Does it hurt your wrist? No, not at all. Does your, do you have full dexterity with that thing on there? Yeah, for sure. But I, does your uh, your crappy calculator watch hurt your pride? My my crappy cal my Apple watch hurt my pride. You have an Apple watch. And it's safe in the pits of never being worn again <laughs> where it ought to be. Uh, really? Yeah. The paper size and setting frame, da la la la. Yes, Kat says, this step cannot be stressed enough. It was a game changer when you taught me this. A lot of people don't do this. A lot of professional crafters still don't do it. It makes such a big difference. It they really does. They know this step, and they still don't do it. Come on, guys. What are you doing? Michaela, thank you. You have good taste. Rachel. What? Let me see if I can find them. Hold on. I saw these and thought of you. Because, see, here's the thing, guys. If me and Becca, we do not agree on style to anything, but if if we happen to agree on something, it's either super good or super bad. If we... Want, what are you... I want you to get me. Uh, am I going to the third camera? <gasps> Becca, that's horrible. Me too, it's so easy to, and then you have to paint the nails. Like, and I'm kind of grossed out. I saw those today and thought of you. That's oh, horrible. It is horrible. Okay, this is printed out. Oh, I'm gonna move this over. Oh my gosh. I almost don't wanna show you. Don't look yet, don't look yet. And then we'll look at the final once it's cut. Oh, these colors are made for me. Well, um, you made it. I did make it. Yeah. So, you're correct. Mm -hmm. Those cro that's horrible. Well, yeah, right? I did just buy more Crocs. That were even more hideous than your fur line <laughs> Crocs. Bad. I'm pretty sure they're more <laughs> they're hideous bad. than your fur line Crocs. I'm Are you wearing them. them to the camp trip? Uh, they're not in yet. Uh, I just ordered them two days ago. Crocs oh, ships pretty here. quickly. That's true. I'm reading comments. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you all. I came in late and started watching from the beginning. The cart for the new cricket holds the new mats. That is true, Paige. That is true. <laughs> April. <laughs> She said her own toes freak her out. Just oh. no. Anna doesn't like feet either. I don't really mind them as long as they're not disgusting. I don't care. Yeah, feet don't really bother me. My friend Bailey, she doesn't even want to look at feet. She doesn't. No, even. Anna's the now, same way. Now, she has a size five foot, you know, so. How she's, does she stand up? She's ridiculous anyways. My feet are literally double her size. Um, so she has like little bitty petite, adorable little feet. You know, so cute and feminine. Amber's feet are that way. I know, it's disgusting. And mainly I just say it's disgusting because I'm just jealous. Um, but I don't care about feet. Okay, remember, we did not turn the ad bleed option on. Are you ready? Oh. Look, watch this, watch this. Oh, of course she flipped it over. Of course. Look at this. It is oh. perfectly She's calibrated, but gorgeous. look at the difference in colors from choosing. Whoa. Right? I mean, this was pretty. It's dark. Yes. This is nice and vibrant. So the material setting you choose is very important. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. 
so adorable. Look at the calibration. <clears throat> bring the bring the paper back in, Becca, on the mat. It's on the mat. Perfection. I mean, it's flawless. Perfection. Flawless. Love it. I'm excited. Are you going to write me a uh, a love letter on that? No, I thought I'd write Jason one. Oh, okay. Not a love letter, but a... A hate letter? Maybe I should change it a little bit. I'll mark it out. Yeah. You are horrible. horrible. That's fine. <laughs> are we coughing each other? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, buddy. Anyway. What do you... Uh, okay. Do you have any questions about print and cut, about calibration, about this, about our membership? Let us know. We are finished. If our friend Jewel is here today, we are finished with the crafting portion of this. So you are free to skedaddle. There will not be anything else about that. Um, and so now we're going to chat with our friends, our crafting friends, because that's what we love. And Becca's got some up, some house renovation, some uh, unexpected home renovation updates. <laughs> God love her. Okay, so if you follow me on social media, you've already seen this, so sorry, it's a repeat. But, um, like, uh, six weeks ago, I'm almost admit, or ashamed to admit it. Six weeks ago, I went in to either take a shower or clean something in the shower or something, I don't know, and turn the water on, and the spigot part that fills up the bathtub shot off. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So we have another shower. It's not been a priority for me to fix it. I've just been taking a shower upstairs because come to find out, I like my kid's shower a whole lot better than mine. So I finally bought a new unit, all the hardware. Dad comes over, we're gonna put it on. Come to find out, you have to take off. We, ours was like a paneled unit and with the tub. We had to take off the side unit in order to get to the innards of the spigot, right? So in order to take off that side unit, we had to cut the sheetrock, we dad, had to cut the sheetrock. So I wanted a new shower anyway. I have hated that shower since we moved in. It has this yellow stain in it that will not come out. That it's was not for me, it was there when we moved it in. It has irked Becca for years. Also, the way that they stabilized the shower, it was one weird piece, one, of wood in the middle. And so when you would stand in the shower, now when I weighed 330 pounds, I get it. The, the shower was like creaking and doing weird stuff, but it also felt like you were gonna fall through the shower. That's a problem. Yes, because of the way that they supported this thing. I've hated it from day one. So when we had to cut out, we dad, had to cut out the sheetrock, <laughs> I was like, well, hell, just rip the whole thing out. If we're having to replace the sheetrock there anyway, why not rip the whole thing out? And dad's like, okay. So, rips it out. Well, come to find out, there's black mold behind part of the shower, right? Thank God I decided to rip it out because there, the vent that vents the, the piping, it's a whole thing. There's a vent that goes in the piping um, that helps air movement and all that stuff that goes through the ceiling. And apparently that vent cover with old owners had to be replaced. There was a leak, something, and so there was moisture down in there and it got black mold. Well, that lake had been fixed, but the black mold had not. So thank God, I'm allergic to black mold, right? Rip it out. Um, yesterday I spent all day cleaning it up and it looks brand freaking new. It looks amazing. I'm really excited. I got this foam bleach stuff, um, sprayed it on there, let it set, wiped it off. I did that three times. In one spot, I did it five times, but it looks brand new. Took a big industrial size fan in there, dried it all up. So we go to buy the new shower. And first of all, who wants to spend $2,000 unexpectedly? Nobody. Who wants to do that? Nobody. Nobody. So I'm going in there. I find what I think I want. And then I was like, hell, if I, at this point it was $1,200. It's like, if I'm going to spend $1,200, I may as well spend another $800 and get a door because I Just hate shower it. curtains. Yeah, I yeah. hate shower curtains. They're the, the liners, if you get the plastic ones. And then if you get the cloth ones, they get all black, like, you know, orange on the bottom. And can we just talk about when it touches you? When you're trying to shower and it touches it you. clings to you. I hate it. I even it. have one of those shower curtains that like, yeah. that goes out. Uh -huh. No, I hate shower curtains. It's horrible. And this is very trivial, but in four years, I've never found one exactly like what I want. So I was like, we'll just spend the 800 bucks, put a new a thing in there. Also, it will help with, with leaking and, and all that stuff. So I'm not, what I'm putting back in is a base 
with the shower and the door and it doesn't have a tub, which I'm really excited about because I don't use a tub. Um, we have a tub upstairs for the kids. Got to Home Depot yesterday, purchased this stuff, um, get it out to the van and realize that the back piece is too big to go in the van. I don't know why I died nor I thought about it. So we call Anna, she brings Mark's truck, put it in there while we're loading it. These pieces are huge, mind you. While we're loading it, we notice that one of the boxes is kind of banged up. So I'll peek in there. Well, the unit is busted. So I take it back in, exchange it, get the new one, which of course it's like on the top of these huge cells, they have to bring their BP cart and push it over and down and all that stuff. So we get it home. They did what? Exactly. <laughs> we get it home, um, get it in there. And the guy asked us what size base and everything we wanted. And we said 60 inch. So he pulls out the 60 inch. Well, there's a 60 by 30 and a 60 by 34. And he didn't ask us that part. And so he gave us the 30 and we didn't think about it. So the base is the wrong size. So we have to take all of that back. In the middle of that, dad's like, oh, maybe I should check the back panel while we're here. It's busted up too. We take everything back, everything. So we go this morning, it's raining, exchange it again. And I said to the little guy, look, I've been here twice already. We're opening this up in this aisle. I am not leaving here until I know that I'm this so is perfect. I'm so glad that you did that. Yeah. So dad is at, at my house right now. He's moving the plumbing over because right now it's on the right side. And if we had to access it, like, for instance, if I wanted to change the spigot and everything, we'd have to take that panel off again. See, or that is a pain. cut through the other side of no. the... So our thought was, my dad is very smart, change the plumbing around so that if we have to access that, it's through my closet. And what we'll do is love just it. cut a hole right there and put a little door. Love it, love it, love so it. So that if we have to access it again, it's easy, right? So that's what he's doing. Thank God my dad can do whatever he wants to do. He's insane. It's annoying, but also to my advantage, so I really don't care. He literally can do anything. He can't cook, though. So I guess he literally can't do anything. He can pay for food. <laughs> Kristen, of course that's okay to say. Yes, $800 for no touching curtains. I'm telling you, I think I'd pay twice that, April. <laughs> uh, I was watching an older video last night and realized that you lost a lot of weight. I hope that's okay to say. Yes, it is. And can we just talk about this? I know there are a lot of influencers. Not, I'm not saying I'm an influencer, but I know there are a lot of influencers who are very much, don't talk about people's weight, good or bad. I, for one, want someone to say to me, oh, my gosh, you've lost yeah. 100 pounds. You look amazing. Yeah. Instead of just acting like they can't tell a difference at all, and I've put in all of this effort and sacrifice to lose weight, and no one says a word, I'm sorry. Which, I want someone to say something. Which, uh, I, I think more, <laughs> if someone's around you, more than just saying you look great, it's you. your, your mood is great. Oh, yeah. You are yeah. leaps and bounds. And I'm not saying you were just straight up miserable. Like you were... All, always great to be around but you're just we can tell that you feel phenomenal which is what matters good amy just running late is this a craft tutorial or what i kid i kid amy you better be glad i love you amy <laughs> <laughs> oh lord we had a broken tub in box two but from plumbing supply industrial store super pain to return well w they acted both times they acted like they didn't really want to help me return it because let's be honest i mean these boxes are huge and 60 by 72 is the size of the back panel. So you can imagine how big that box is. Um, and this time they were like, oh, did you order it from online? And, I, and first of all, I didn't. But first I thought, well, what if I did? Are you not going to return it in store because I ordered it online? Yeah, yeah. Home Depot? Yeah. I don't Come know. On. Come on. Thank you, Micah. You are so sweet. Micah, with me seeing Becca every day, of course I notice it. But I notice it more sitting right here with her, like right now. And then if someone's like, hey, where's that video at? And I go find the video and I see, I see Becca in the video and I'm like, what? Because I see she Becca. She ate herself. I stop. <laughs> but I see Becca every day, so it feels like a very gradual change to me. But when we look at pictures and stuff from a while ago, you're like, what? It's shocking. It's it really is it's alarming. It's crazy. I'll look back at pictures that I thought were really great pictures, like ones that I liked, and I'm like, 
Oh, Lord. Try a bathroom remodel with special order glass, and then when the glass comes in, it doesn't fit. Oh, Scott, that gave me cold chills. That would, I know, no, Kat. I know how Kat is. Did she just freak out? Did I'm she sure. Just, did you have to pop another pill? Because I would have. Mamma B got, she paid an arm and a leg for custom kitchen cabinets. Like, the guy came in, like, measured five different times, and they had problems, like, three different times in a row with these custom-made kitchen cabinets. And poor Mamma B was like, what have I done? But did he really retire now? See, Kat, that's the interesting thing, because... He, he did a cabinet something for Anna, and then he came to my house last week and was like, okay, what do you need done? And I was like, well, first priority is this shower spigot, right? Then he's building me some extra cabinets and a pantry for my laundry room. <clears throat> and <laughs> also, I want, if I'm going to redo my shower, then I'm going to change out the lighting, which I can do myself. I can change out the lighting in my bathroom, but if he's there and wants to do it, he can do it. And then me and Anna are gonna do board and batten in there, which we're gonna video for you all. Um, and I'm gonna get new vanities and it's so golly. It's something that I've wanted to do since we moved in, but I didn't wanna do it right now. Anyway, and then dad also made a fun surprise, which I'll post for Fallon. He and mom found this twin bed with you know like the the post bed and made the most adorable bench for her ever out of it he brought it yesterday i had to paint it so no he's not really retired he's working more and not getting paid i did make him lasagna last night uh, that's his payment i love lasagna you're welcome delicious um Brenda, if you give a mouse a cookie, yes. <laughs> My husband lost a lot of weight, and a client told him he no longer looked like a squirrel storing nuts for winter. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know what my dad says? <clears throat> he's, he's so mean. He'll say, have you been stung by a bee? That's what he'll say. He'll go, <gasps> Oh, Rachel, Rebecca, get the Benadryl. Get the, Rachel's been stuck by And I'm like, I hate you. I d but now he's saying it with love, and he knows that I've – I know it's a joke. He's not being – I mean, he's being mean, but you know what I mean. But, yeah, he'll say, have you been stung by a bee? And I'm like, you're horrible to me. <laughs> he also calls me Q-tip when Anna um, bleaches my hair. He calls me Q-tip. I get lots of love. Yeah. That's hysterical. No longer storing nuts for winter. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Becca, do you use those ready-to-bake noodles in your lasagna? Do you like to use those? I couldn't tell a difference. Really? Okay. They look, I mean, they look and feel the same to me. Really? Then boiling them beforehand? Okay. I'm on the list for painting kitchen cabinets and walls and repaint the upstairs bath. Yeah, Mom, I really don't. She's on the list? Yeah. It's her husband. And her list was before us. I don't know how we Jan. got Jan. Now, Mom could paint the bathroom. You don't have to wait on Dad to paint. But you do have to wait on Dad for the cabinets. That's so funny. Jan's like, I'm in the queue. She was on the list before, so I'm I really in the don't queue. Know. I really don't know how we jump ship there. Uh, I do. Sweet baby girls take precedent. The oh, good. Give mom more ammunition to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> um, can we get the recipe, please? Micah, I don't know. I, it's the easiest thing ever. I don't like meat in my lasagna. I'm not a big meat eater. Ugh, I, I literally, this meat. is all I do, right? And it's so good. I take pasta sauce and put a small layer of pasta sauce, right? Like a garlic something. And then a layer of noodles. And then I mix a large thing of ricotta cheese and cottage cheese and season it with like salt and garlic or garlic salt and pepper and really good. It needs to be good in season because it's bland otherwise. Put a layer of that and then I just alternate until it's full. Oh, I put mozzarella cheese. That's stupid easy. Alternate. It is that's so ridiculous. good though. It is so good. That's it. Maybe that's what I should make for us. For a Saturday? I said baked spaghetti, but. Do lasagna. Maybe I should do lasagna. It's so easy, I Rachel. I love lasagna. It's all going to taste 
Doesn't the sauce have to be thinner with the no-boil noodles? I do it the same so, way no matter what. Maria, we, you have to have plenty of sauce. Like, it's, everything's got to be saturated. Because that's why I asked Beck, is I used those no-boil noodles once, Maria, and it was crunchy the next day. Like, I let it sit in the fridge, then baked it the next day, and she was still crunchy. But it's because I didn't use enough sauce. I was stingy with my sauce. Like, it didn't have enough to soak up and, and get moist. Yeah, I use two jars of sauce. See, that's it. Yeah. That, that's got to be the key. Yeah. Now yeah. I want lasagna, and I think Wayne took all the extras for lunch. Well, we'll have it one day this week. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Anyway, y'all are fun. Thank you for this live. As always, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Bear with us next week. Our schedule might be a little bit off. We're we're on our little vacay. You're going to see some super fun content from us. So, no schedule. We're not going to give you guys a schedule right now. Just... It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Wait and see. New cut files are coming next week. I'm going to be, I always, always get the most work done when I'm on vacation. It's very fun. I love it. I love it. Mm. I think that's it. I was, I was looking back. I think that's it. Have a fantastic, thir have a fantastic Thursday, everyone. And we'll see you when we see you.